If you don't know by now, it should come as no surprise that I'm a lifelong fan of professional wrestling. I love the clashes of styles and formats from indie wrestling where they blend many different styles like high flying, shoot style, submission, and technical wrestling performed across the globe and highly contributed to the success of talents such as Samoa Joe, Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles to name a few. WWE, where the performance coaches train and mold homegrown talents into sports entertainers in their own state-of-the-art training facilities. John Cena, Batista, Randy Orton, Bianca Belair are good examples. European influenced catch wrestling, also known as catch ass, catch can, in which they use submissions or hook moves like arm bars, knee bars, heel hooks, and ankle locks to stretch and hyperextend joints and limbs. Zack Sabre Jr. or even Pete Dunne are prime examples of this. The high-flying and aerial-based Lucha Libre style of pro wrestling, which is a spectacle in its own genre in which its performers distinguish themselves by sporting vibrant and colorful masks, or mascaras, which is considered sacred even to this day. The dynamic high-flying movesets that made the late great Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio Jr. beloved household names. Lucha Libre is transcendent in the popular culture, which has been featured in movies like Nacho Libre and popular video games like Guacamelee and Heroes Del Ring. Pure Resu, the style of pro wrestling popularized in Japan, which birthed a strong style that many professional wrestlers have adapted into their own styles. New Japan Pro Wrestling primarily uses this approach in which they encompass martial arts techniques like strikes and kicks, with an emphasis on submission wrestling as well. See Shinsuke Nakamura, Kota Ibushi, and Okada. Joshi Puro, Japanese women's professional wrestling. Hard-hitting, high-flying, fast-paced, honor, beauty, passion, garish outfits, importance. When it comes to the best of the best professional wrestling on the planet, no need to look any further than Joshi Puro. Some of the greatest athletes, men or women for that matter, have come from the land of the rising sun and or foreigners who made their names overseas in Japanese pro wrestling promotions. In this day and age, that distinction, as far as the women go, goes to World Wonder Ring Stardom or Stardom for short. Stardom is the absolute pinnacle of women's wrestling where the performers are highly trained and highly skilled. Just this year, Stardom produced a match of the year contender when Suri fought World of Stardom champion Utami Hayashista in a barn burner. A match that received rave reviews and one that renowned journalist Dave Meltzer rated 5.5 stars. Stardom boasts annual tourneys such as Cinderella and 5 Star Grand Prix, 7 active championships, and a comprehensive roster made up of the most talented women's wrestlers in the nation. The wrestlers are segregated into factions, otherwise known as Stardom as units. The Cosmic Angel, Stars, Queen's Quest, Donna Del Mundo, or DDM for short, and Old Time. However, there was one unit that was composed of the best up-and-coming talent who were well on their way towards a hostile takeover as the number one unit in the promotion. The now defunct Tokyo Cyber Squad, spearheaded by none other than the late Hana Kimura. Hana was a second generation pro wrestler, former champion in stardom, and while untelevised, wrestled in a dark match which preceded New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 14 event, the first women's match hosted in the Tokyo Dome since 2002. Hana was a kind soul and not only well respected by peers, but she was considered the gaijin helper who made non-Japanese talent feel at ease and more comfortable while so far from home. She was a natural star who was well on her way toward greatness, but sadly, her life was cut far too short. The online bullying, constant insults, and death threats were infuriating to say the very least and what contributed to her downward spiral of depression, suicidal thoughts, and what would ultimately cost Hana her life. This is the cyberbullying suicide of Hana Kimura. Greetings and salutations, this is JTR Raps. It's been a while, I know, writer's block is a real thing. I wish I had the community tab to keep you all posted, hopefully one day as the channel continues to grow, but now I'm back with more content and no matter the hiatus, I'm going to keep coming with more, so stick with me. Let's talk about Hana Kimura. What do you remember about Hana? What resonated with you? Were you a fan? Was she the reason you got into stardom in the first place? Hana didn't necessarily get me into stardom because I began watching when EO and Kyrie were active competitors. but. I can't say with certainty that Hana was the reason I paid a monthly subscription. Something about her aura just attracted me. Some things really. 
Her persona, her in-ring ability, and hard-hitting offense, her charisma was off the charts, and she was the perfect woman to lead a stable of both international and gaijin talent and fellow Japanese competitors in need of a career resurgence such as Jungle Kiona and Konami. Tokyo Cyber Squad did that for these talented women in my opinion. When I think of stardom wrestling, even to this day I think of Hana. The two are synonymous. At least to me. How did Hana Kimura get her start? Let's wrap. Hana Kimura was born on September 3rd, 1997 in Yokohama, Japan. She is the daughter of Kyoko Kimura, a former professional wrestler and mixed martial artist who's now retired, as well as the adoptive daughter of pro wrestler and MMA fighter Isao Kobayushi, commonly referred to as Isao, who married Kyoko in 2016. Kyoko had Hana when she was just 20 years old and chose the name Hana for her daughter because it was, quote, easy to say and thought she would be adored for her name, words to that effect. Her biological father was an Indonesian man, which unfortunately for Hana, her mixed ethnicity meant she would be subjected to bullying beginning in elementary school. Her classmates would taunts of go back to Indonesia. Hana would go home crying, but nonetheless kept up her attendance. Kyoko ended up meeting and falling in love with Hana's father, whose identity remains anonymous, while he was a tour guide in Bali during Kyoko's travels across Southeast Asia. They would eventually marry and return to Japan, where they had Hana in 97. The cultural shock of it all was too much for Kyoko's husband at the time, who would ultimately separate from Kyoko and return to Indonesia around three months later. Not only was Kyoko a young parent, but there's this social stigma surrounding single mothers in Asian countries. Now, despite all of this, Kyoko was still pursuant of her dreams and brought little Hana with her to her training sessions in the dojo of Japanese Women's Pro Wrestling Project, JWP for short, in Tokyo. Hana would watch her mother train. She always seemed to have this lively personality, and even as a young child, she danced in front of her mother's friends during gatherings. Throughout middle school and high school, Hana developed a passion for being an entertainer. She had ambitions of wanting to model, dance, and act. She wanted to become an action movie star according to her mother's account. Those ambitions, however, would gradually transition into dreams of being a pro wrestler following in her mother's footsteps. Her mother was ecstatic that Hana found something she was so passionate about. Fun fact, in 2005, when she was just 7 years old, she won the Dramatic Dream Team, or DDT, Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship, a comedy title, think WWF Hardcore Championship or 24-7 Championship, where it's up for grabs 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and all you need is a referee and opportunity for the title to change hands. The bout was contested during the promotion's Neo Midsummer Tag Tournament in a sold-out arena at the Tokyo Cinema Club. The Japanese people witnessed as she pinned the champion Tammy Mouse at the time before being dethroned by her mother only moments later. Eleven years later, she began her training in the Japanese Puro Resu Russell One promotion, which was founded by Kiji Muto, better known as the Great Muta, in 2013. She debuted as part of Project Pro Wrestling Ace for the training of young up-and-comers under the direction of Japanese pro wrestler Kaz Hayashi, who's best known for his work as a wrestler and head booker in all Japan pro wrestling, who also appeared for the now defunct World Championship Wrestling on their flagship show, Monday Nitro. Her graduation was announced on March 30th, 2016 and fell to her classmate, Rei Kasaki, in her debut match on that very night. They went on to wrestle one another on several cards and appeared in other women's wrestling events for companies such as Sendai Girls, Oz Academy, and JWP before she would ultimately pin a contract with World Wonder Ring Stardom. On August 7, 2016, Hana organized her very first event for the Shin Kiba First Ring venue in Tokyo named Hana Kimura Memorial Produce Hana, which was dedicated to her mother Kyoko. The show was described by some spectators of the show to be mildly recommended and featured four matches to include a six-person mixed tag team match, a gauntlet match, and as the action picked up halfway through the show, a women's tag team match in the main event of the evening featured your typical veteran versus rookie match in Kyoko Kimura against her daughter, Hana. That particular match is described as a very fun main event. Oh. 
Hana seemed to have all the basics down pat and Kyoko did a great job of working over the arm before putting her daughter away with her patented arm submission. She began appearing against Stardom by September 2016 and joined Stardom's Hill unit, Odentai, teaming with her mother and retired pro wrestler Keigetsu to capture the Artist of Stardom Championship, the six women tag team championship from the formidable team of Io Shirai, Kairi Hojo, and Mayu Iwatani in 2017. Hana and stablemate Kengetsu will go on to win the Goddess of Stardom Tag Team Championship and defend the title for close to a year, taking down formidable teams such as Io Shirai and Viper, Azuki and Momo Watanabe, and Mayu Watani and Tam Nakano before being dethroned by Watani and Saki in 2018. Hana turned on Kengetsu by attacking her before leaving Owentai. She appeared in Ring of Honor by March 2018 and unsuccessfully had partaken in a tourney which would crown their inaugural Women of Honor champion. She reappeared for Ring of Honor several months later and actually toured in Mexico during her stint with the promotion and competed for the Promociones Contreras or PCM Championship against competitors such as Lady TNT, Mary Apache, and Starfire, just to name a few. She continued to compete in arenas across Mexico before her tour ended abruptly due to sustaining an unfortunate injury during her trip. Hana announced her departure from Russell One and pinned the full-time contract with Stardom, officially signing on with the promotion in 2019. Stardom implemented an annual draft in which the team leaders of each unit select from a pool of essentially every wrestler on the Stardom roster. This makes the draft a huge deal and shapes the entire landscape for the year going forward. 2019, the draft featured a five-way battle in order to determine the selection order. The first wrestler to score a pinfall, submission, or throw their opponent over the top rope and onto the floor earned the first pick. The winner excuses herself from the match while the other four fight it out until there are only two. The winner between the final two competitors earns the fourth and final pick while the loser has no other choice but to disband their unit at the conclusion. The match featured Iwatani who represented stars, Momo of Queen's Quest, Jungle Kiona of Jungle Assault Nation or Jam for short, Kegetsu of Ontai, and finally Hana of the International Army, named leader during the draft, which is a testament to her kindliness while aiding foreign talent arriving to the promotion. Hana bested Kiona by stomping her off the apron onto the floor, earning her the final pick while Jan was forced to disband in an emotional embrace on the floor. While certainly a tearjerker of a moment, it was gratifying to see Kimura make her pick while she sat on top of the turnbuckle and yelled out for Kiona to re-enter the ring as Hana's first pick for International Army. Kyoko cried almost hysterically, but in her own words proclaimed, quote, Last year I created Jan with these hands. Today I lost Jan with these hands. I really love the members of Jam, but I like Hana's way of life. Much to the astonishment of the crowd, she followed up with Konami as her number two and formulated a stable of impressive talent which included notable names such as Mary Apache, who Kimura called her Mexican mom, her daughter Natsumi, Rebel Kel, Bobby Tyler, Ruka, Rina, Zoe Lucas, and Death Yamasan. Kimura spoke out about being bullied in school due to her Indonesian heritage and being made to feel like an outsider in her own country. Fortunately, those experiences she mustered through shaped her into a stronger person. Therefore, in my humble opinion, she was destined to leave Onentai, the unit her mother actually co-founded in order to lead the International Army with its goal of creating a supportive community for non-Japanese talent in Tokyo. She adopted her signature and colorful cyber god persona, and as Japanese members in her army expanded, its name changed to Tokyo Cyber Squad. In the 2019 draft, Kegetsu suggested each unit outline their goals. Well, TCS's goal of individuality remained the same. She said, quote, diamonds can only be polished with diamonds, end quote. During her career in stardom, Hana would go on to achieve a handful of accolades, which included two stints as Artist of Stardom Champion, Goddess of Stardom Champion, the winner of Stardom's 2019 Fighting Spirit Award, the 2019 Five Star GP Tournament winner, and albeit untelevised, she made history in the Tokyo Dome on January 4th, 2020 in the first female match to take place at an NJPW Russell Kingdom pay-per-view event. In September 2019, Kimura joined Terrace House Tokyo, once a very popular Japanese reality-based TV show in the fifth installment in the franchise, which premiered as a Netflix Japan original series and aired on Fuji TV. The 
show documented the lives of six men and women who moved into a house and temporarily lived together to build relationships. They keep their day job and go on about their daily lives. Hanna was like a breath of fresh air to the show and really resonated with viewers of the show, such as Farah Hasnane, a contributing writer for the Japan Times, who went on public record to share her thoughts. She said she brought the authentic and multifaceted experience of being a mixed race woman in Japan to the show, a sight that is rare in mainstream media here, end quote. If you watched an episode that featured Hana, then you know she made it her mission to dispel stereotypes about Japanese women in the sport of professional wrestling. Kamora even brought her TCS stable mates, Jungle Kiona and Konami, into the fold and discussed how they would keep their professions a secret in their dating lives. During her stint on the show, Hana succeeded in explaining to the world how cool professional wrestling really is. From the few episodes I got to see, Hana didn't seem fake or portray the typical reality TV actress for the flashy lights and the cameras. She came across as real and unapologetically Hana. She was passionate about her life choices and her profession, which is why what I'm about to tell you should come as little to no surprise. In a scene that aired during episode number 38 of the show in late March of 2020, there was an altercation between her and a male cast member who accidentally shrank her wrestling attire while doing laundry. Not just any wrestling attire, but the pro gear she wore during her match on that historic night at Russell Kingdom 14, which was obviously special to her and made it such a huge deal, right? Here's an excerpt from the show in question. え、うん。俺はそのまま入れちゃってなんか見てなかった。え、回したってこと。ごめんなさい。多分混ざってたんだよね。そのコスチュームが入っちゃってたってこと。どうどうだったその縮んでた。縮んでた。色も薄んで。
just jumping on the trampoline isn't interesting. Then I was instructed to touch her breasts or something. I refused saying that's not right, but these types of extreme requests were a daily occurrence. What the staff want is love and incidents, and they were aiming for things to blow up and go viral on social media. Fuji TV proclaimed to have looked into the allegations but found no evidence of wrongdoing or claims that Hana was encouraged to slap her co-star. However, in an interview translated by Farah Akasi via Twitter, Kyoko explained that Hana refused to act violent or obnoxious for the cameras but instead opted to slap his cap off as depicted in a series of tweets. To further refute the show's authenticity, episode number 38 is amply named Case of the Costume Incident, which will tell you everything you need to know. As a result of the infamous fight between Hana and her male housemate, many dedicated viewers sided with Kimura over the incident. However, social media can be a cesspool of negativity. Offended viewers saw this as an opportunity to express their disdain for Hana by hurling abusive and hateful comments online. When I tell you she received a lot of hateful messages on a recurring basis, I do mean a lot. These are just some of the vile comments Hana was made to deal with on a daily basis. A word of warning, some are flat out repulsive and roughly translated. Go die. You're disgusting. When will you die? Literally tons of these messages flooded Hana's social media accounts. I'm talking 300 hateful messages posted by multiple users. There's even one Japanese man in his 20s who was referred to prosecutors by Tokyo police for particularly malicious comments. He's suspected of having cyber bullied Kimura on Twitter by anonymously and repeatedly posting such comments as, hey, when are you going to die on her Twitter feed? According to investigative sources, the troll was identified through screenshots Kimura has saved on her phone even after the poster deleted said comments. As a result, criminal proceedings were opened up against the Osaka man who was subsequently charged with cyberbullying and public insult, which carries a punishment of imprisonment for up to 29 days and a fine of at least 1,000 yen and not more than 10,000 yen, about $91. During voluntary questioning, he admitted to police that he wanted to get back at Kimura after seeing her act so violently toward a male on the show. Investigators say he sent an apology letter to Kimura's family, though I'm unsure if Hana's mother had confirmed or denied this. For the abusive messages, the unnamed man was charged a mere $81. The hurtful messages were enough to cause long-lasting emotional distress. On the early morning of May 23rd, 2020, Hana shared just some of the negative comments she had been receiving across her social media accounts. Hana grew tired of the hatred. She began posting images of self-harm on Instagram and Twitter with one chilling message that reads, I don't want to be a human anymore. It was a life I wanted to be loved. Thank you, everyone. I love you. Bye. In her latest Instagram story, she posted her cat with a caption that read simply, goodbye. This caused a frenzy and obviously concerned fans and those closest to her. It even caught the attention of fellow pro wrestler and former member of stardom Kyrie Sane, who immediately called Jungle Kiona, as well as the founder and CEO of stardom Rossi Ogawa. It was Kiona who rushed to Kimura's apartment, but unfortunately arrived too late. Kimura was found lifeless and pronounced dead after being found in her Tokyo flat. Firefighters and an ambulance were called to the scene soon after. Police informed Japanese media that Kimura was found with a plastic bag over her head and a container of sulfide was found nearby. Several suicide notes were found in her room. Her official cause of death was hydrogen sulfide ingestion, which was initially reported by pro wrestling journalist Dave Meltzer and corroborated by International Business Times. Stardom confirmed her passing in a tweet which stated, Stardom fans, we are very sorry to report that our Hana Kimura has passed away. Please be respectful and allow some time for things to process and keep your thoughts and prayers with our family and friends. We appreciate your support during this difficult time. News of Hana's passing left the wrestling world flabbergasted to say the very least. Sadness, anger, confusion, shock, and awe are just some emotions that come to mind. We can all agree, for the most part, that 2020 sucked. Kobe Bryant has started Gianna. Six others perished their deaths in a helicopter crash. COVID-19 had been declared a global pandemic and the resulting impact of that led to shutdown. 
Former pro wrestling Shad Gaspard, known for his tenure in WWE as a member of Crime Time. He died after drowning in a swimming accident on May 17th. And now Hana Kimura died days later after she committed suicide. Since the news broke, wrestlers and fans have reacted with many calling to put a stop to hateful comments and cyberbullying. The following is a sampling of the messages dedicated to the late Hana Kimura on social media. Kiona shared a moving eulogy written for Hana in Shoe Pro Magazine, which was precisely translated by a user on Twitter at TWF87. I'll leave the Tumblr link in the description below if you'd like to give it a read. In WWE, former NXT Women's Champion Io Shirai and former lead announcer Mauro Ronaldo paid tribute to Kimura during one of the broadcasts while Dakota Kai dyed her hair pink in tribute to her at an NXT In Your House pay-per-view event. Decorated superstar Sasha Banks wore a black armband with the words Hana in white letters on the May 29th episode of SmackDown. And the entire stardom roster paid tribute to Hana as they surrounded the ringside area during a 10 bell salute. Hana's co star and fellow cast member, an Italian manga artist known as Pepe, dedicated drawings in the third volume of his animated manga series Mingo. Kenny Omega sported a t shirt on what would have been her 23rd birthday on September 3rd episode of AEW Dynamite which can be found on Pro Wrestling Tees. And Hana's mother, Kyoko, hosted a Hana Kimura Memorial Show, which aired on Fight TV in honor of her late daughter. The show received rave reviews and featured video tributes sent in by wrestlers from Japanese talent, both past and present, WWE and AEW. Featured a pretty cool 28-person All-Star Battle Royal with participants like Super Delphin, Andres Miyagi, and even featured the in-ring one off returns of both Hazuki and former stablemate Kengetsu, who both retired in 2019. Her career was recapped from start to finish and followed by a moment of silence and a 10-bell salute rung by none other than Jungle Kiona. The lasting image of the broadcast featured Kyoko saying, quote, We love Hana. Hana loves everyone. She was only 22 years old. R.I.P. Hana Kumara. It's gonna do it for this episode. If you know someone in a crisis, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. It's 1-800-273-8255 or text the crisis text line at hello to 741-741. Both are free and available 24-7, so all confidential. We have this training model in the Army called ACE, or ACE, which stands for Ask, Care, and Escort. It's an awareness tool we use to honestly question our battles who may have suicidal thoughts or behaviors. You can implement that too if you're concerned about a friend's social media update. Or dial 911, 112, or the emergency services in your country. Leave a like. I'll catch you all on the next one. Until then, take care.